Hello friends, it's Bill, and you are watching Bill's Box of Sound, and it's approaching ever so fast. Time marches on. Record Store Day 2024 is just about here upon us. I'm recording this and putting this up on Thursday, the 18th of April, and the 20th of April, yes, 420, for all of those who enjoy that kind of thing. April 20th, Saturday morning, I'll be there in line getting records for Record Store Day. So, um, I got some records to talk about and some records to show you. And uh, just to, to prep you, get, get you prepared for Record Store Day. But first of all, some sad news. We found out today about the passing of Dickie Betts who is most famous for being in the Allman Brothers Band. He's uh, that guitar player right there, lead guitar player. Um, he uh, was not the slide guitar player. He provided many, many solos. He also had a lot of solo albums. For those of you who are Allman Brothers fans, and this is the other very popular Allman Brothers album, Eat a Peach. Uh, he will be dearly missed. I let's see, I'm trying to remember how old he was. Yeah, he was 80 years old. And um, quick reminder, he was the lead singer and soloist on Ramblin' Man by the Allman Brothers. Sorry to see him go. I'm going to be spinning some Allman Brothers tonight in his, uh, in his honor. Anyway... Uh, back to Record Store Day. Um, got a couple of records here that I was sent in advance uh, from uh, my good friends at Cooking Vinyl, which are going to be available in both the U.S. and the U.K. for Record Store Day. The first one of which is a compilation of rare and unreleased uh, remixes by The Orb. Yes, the ambient chill techno group themselves. And um, I first heard of them when I got to the uh, Adventures Beyond the Ultra World double CD. Very good chill out techno music. And uh, it's a single album and it is on lovely green vinyl. Not transparent, but uh, you can shine light through it. And um, I listened to this very relaxing record. If you are an Orb fan, I don't have to introduce these guys to you. They're they're pretty they're pretty good. The other record that I got ahead of Record Store Day was this thing here. Now. Looking right here, you say, what the heck is that? I, I don't know what that is. It looks like a tape box. Yeah, that that's what the picture is on the front. And if you are familiar with it, this has something to do with a classic album. came out in 1978. Pyramid by the Alan Parsons Project. I think this is what their like fourth album. This came after Eve, I believe. While not their best album, it certainly is a good album. It has uh, several good tracks on it. I listened to, to this again recently. Uh, you got What Goes Up, uh, In the Lap of the Gods, Pyroma Pyromania, Hypergamma Spaces. You know, th this is best experienced as a work in total. Uh, just listening to Side 1 and Side 2. So... This is not coming out, but this record here is entitled Pyramid Work in Progress by the Alan Parsons Project. And the sticker on here says a limited edition 180 gram heavyweight orange vinyl LP. So let me first show you the orange vinyl. Where is it? Comes in a polyline sleeve too, very nice. Check that out. 
And there's also an insert uh, inside. Um, contains demos, rough mixes, and early songwriting diary versions of the tracks on the Pyramid album. And it also contains an insert featuring an image of the Pyramid original master tape showing the working title of the album and track titles. I pulled this out and uh, it, it, it's got, got uh, this, this right here first up here, EMI tape. That's uh, that's uh, copied and pasted from an EMI tape box. And it tells you all the tracks that are on here. And this is the photo of the aforementioned tape box with the working titles. For some reason, it looks like it says Jungle Bells on here. It has all these rough mixes and other information. And it also says that uh, the uh, Work in Progress album was curated by Sally Wolfson, and which I'm just guessing off the top of my head that that is um, Eric Wolfson's widow or maybe a family member uh, because uh, he has passed away, of course. And if I were to describe exactly what this album is, it's kind of like... If you bought a deluxe edition of an album and it had extra tracks on it, like mop tapes, different mixes, songs in progress, and things like that, that's what this would be. Listening to it, it, it wasn't exactly a prize listen, but if you are an Alan Parsons Project completist, and I know there's plenty of them out there, this would definitely be of interest to you. And as a limited edition record store day item, that's what gives it its appeal. So a big thank you to the folks out of Cooking Vinyl for advancing me the, uh, those to check out. Now let's go to what I want to get for record store day. I've been hemming and hawing on this for almost two complete months. And... Here's the things that I'm probably going to be going for and that I'll probably show you Saturday night on my live stream. Uh, first, 100 Gex. This is not going to be a Record Store Day release. This is just a cover of their most recent album, 10,000 Gex. But anyway, 100 Gex is putting out a 10-inch shaped picture disc, which looks like a marijuana leaf. And it is a re-release of their Snake Eyes EP, which came out in 2022. Uh, that is a collector's item. Yeah, there's going to be uh, 3,500 copies of that pr pr pressed. So check that out. I'm also going to be uh, making a beeline for the Cannonball Adderley release, Poppin' in Paris, which is recorded in the 70s. And uh, features, of course, Cannonball Adderley on sax, his brother Nat on cornet. And what's going to be very interesting for me is George Duke on keyboards. Because George Duke left Zappa and the Mothers so he could be in Cannonball Adderley's band. Um, he said at the time that he left, it's like he had the opportunity to play with Cannonball Adderley. And he said that that was too much of an opportunity. He had to do it. And from what I hear, because there have been certain people in the vinyl community who have been given advanced copies of this thing, they say it's rather good. So I'm going to be picking myself up a copy of that. Next up, we've got Captain Beefheart, the Spotlight Kid, okay? Now... Rhino Records has been uh, doing a series of re-releases, remasters, and expansions of Captain Beefheart's albums on Record Store Day and also Record Store Day Black Friday. Started with uh, the Clear Spot re-release. It, it had the album remastered and the second disc of demos, remixes, etc., then the last one that came out was Shiny Beast Bat Chain Puller, which is one of my favorite 
Captain Beefheart albums. The same treatment was given to that. First album was the remastered record, and the second record was remixes, unreleased stuff, and uh, that was a really good, really good release. Now, this one, Spotlight Kid, I've got a radio promo, a white label promo of this. So I'll be very happy to get a new copy of this uh, all cleaned up. And I, I'm wondering if they'll be making any improvements on the sound of it. And uh, also very interested to see what other things are on the second disc. Rhino's been doing a lot of fun stuff with that. Coming up next, uh, this is one of the things that if I don't get this, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. It's The Residence Leftovers Again Again. Now, this is Leftovers ag Again, which came out a couple of record store days ago. And it is mop tapes, just odds and ends, very cleverly put together by The Residence. And I slept on this when it first came out. I had to search and buy it off of somebody on the Discogs, and I'm very happy I did. So I'm not going to skip my chance to get leftovers again, again, again. So I'll be picking that up. Next, Todd Rundgren, Liars. Now, this album came out in what year? 2004 which is also the year that I met my lovely wife. And this is an album that came out by Todd Rundgren. My good friend John Basso told me about this because at this point in time, I had kind of given up on Todd Rundgren. He was kind of like doing albums that were nothing but covers of his old works and things like that. And I was very, very disappointed. But then he put out this album in 2004, and um, it's only been available on CD or on DVD audio, albeit a very badly authored DVD audio. If, uh, if, if you are a big Todd Rundgren fan and you don't have this and you're looking for it, prepare to be disappointed by the way that this thing is put together. But I have it anyway. But don't let that take away from the brilliance of this album. Because uh, Todd says in the liner notes, all of these songs are about a paucity of truth. At first, they may seem to be about other things, but that is just a reflection of how much dishonesty we have accepted in our daily lives. We are raised from birth to believe things that cannot be proven or that are plainly not true. Hmm. Boy, that's, that's happening a lot nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> People will often brag of their honesty when there is so much they have simply chosen to ignore or leave unexamined. The fact is, we are terrified of the truth. Todd composed the whole thing. He plays all the instruments. He sings all the, uh, the vocals. This is a great record from Todd Rundgren. If you don't have it, seek it out. And that one, how many copies are they making of that? They're only making 1,500 of those, and that is a two-record set. Now, there is another Todd Rundgren piece that's coming out, which is the Todd album. Hang on a second, I'll pull that out for you. This album is being re-released, and... There's 4,000 copies of this. It's a two-record set. This originally came out in 1974, 50 years ago. And uh, this is a follow-up to A Wizard of True Star. And this is going to be on orange and green vinyl. This, If, you, if uh, you're getting into Todd Rundgren and you don't have this record, you have to fix that. You need to get this record. It's called odd, toddly enough. So, that's coming out on Record Store Day, colored vinyl. And, let's see, is there anything else that I, I have interest in? There is a uh, LP from Stephen Wilson called Harmonic Divergence, which is vinyl-only remixes of songs from his most recent album, The Harmony Codex. Looking forward to getting that. 
Also, for you Zappa fans, this is coming out. Frank Zappa for President. Now, this was originally available. This was released in 2016 on CD only. Now, this contains a mixture of Synclavier pieces, electronic music pieces, for those of you unfamiliar with Zappa, a remix of Brown Shoes Don't Make It, a vocal version of Amnerica, some spoken word stuff from Frank, a re-release of the 1988 track When the Lie is So Big, which came from Broadway the Hard Way, Medieval Ensemble, and Frank's version of America the Beautiful, which was recorded on the 1988 tour, which is also available on the box set Zappa 88, the last U.S. show. That's a no-brainer. I'm picking it up. It's a two-record set, white vinyl with red and blue splatter on it. Coming out because this is a presidential election year. So, as Frank would say, don't forget to register and vote. It really, really matters. Okay, anything else that I'm going to be picking up? Let me just double check my list here. Oh, yeah. The South Park 25th Anniversary Concert. That's going to be a three-record set. And that has Trey Parker and Matt Stone from South Park in concert with Primus and Ween and special guests Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson from Rush. 25th Anniversary of Songs from South Park and Beyond available on Record Store Day, and how many copies of that is going to be made available. That is going to be a limited edition of 4,000 copies. Now, this is going to be pressed on Towley Blue vinyl. If you know who Towley is from South Park, he's on the front cover of this record. So, if you're a South Park fan, or a Primus fan, or a Ween fan, or a Rush fan. No brainer, you gotta pick that up. So, yeah, there's some other things that, uh, that that are coming out that uh, I was interested in, but I'm not gonna pick up. First was a two record set of Sparks, Number One in Heaven, and an album from the same period by a, a disco singer named no Noel written and produced by the Mayo Brothers. It's interesting, but I listened to it online and it really wasn't that good. I already have a good copy of Number One in Heaven, so I'm going to pass on that. The other thing that I was interested in was the uh, Yes, Yale Bowl 1971, which is a live concert by of Yes uh, from the year that the Yes album was released. And uh, when you look at the track list, it looks fantastic. But this was part of a boxed set that was released commemorating the Yes album. And the audio is available on YouTube, officially put out by Rhino. It's a mono radio broadcast, and the audio is kind of subpar. If you're a yes completist, you know what to do. But for me, it wasn't important enough. There's enough other things I'm buying that are going <laughs> to be straining my poor little wallet. So that is it. Get yourself some good sleep. Get up early. Go to Record Store Day. If you're not interested in Record Store Day, well, that's fine. Go to your record store anyway. Do some crate digging. Pick up some records, okay? And um, I will be seeing you on my Saturday night live stream showing you what stuff I did end up buying. Oh, by the way, there's one other thing I wanted to say. If there's anybody out there uh, who watches my videos and you're in the UK, 
I'm really interested in getting a copy of the propaganda uh, release, the, the 1000 Eyes of Dr. Babus, because it's not being released in the U.S. And I love propaganda. Oh, man. I, I had a great time, and I'm going to have a great time uh, on Record Store Day. I hope you do, too. So go listen to some music, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, coming soon, here's a hint at the future.